why were they, why did they do it? I have a theory, they did it so we could go to war. You know, and why did they do everything so we can go to war? Uh, we're the biggest arms dealer in the world. We, we sell bullets to both sides. We start a war over there and a war over there and we stir it up. So uh, we, you know, whoever we want to win, to give them the best bullets. And that's what we've been doing for a long time. My government's never lied to me, have they? Let's see, where should we start? The Gulf of Tonkin incident? Now that took us into war in Vietnam. They've now admitted it was a lie. So 58,000 of my generation were killed based upon a lie. What but that, that doesn't count, does it? I what does that have to do with 9 11? That shows that we will lie to go to war. Uh, uh, war is uh, old men protecting their property by sending young men, or rich old men protecting their property by sending middle class and lower class young men off to die. It always Look, has been. This whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. It's very difficult to say it out loud because people are intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. Let's but, the truth, but the truth has to be, the truth has to come out. That's why I'm doing this interview. The fact of the matter happens to be that the whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. Yet yeah, there's a war going on in Iraq because we invaded Iraq. And people over there fighting, you know. But the war on terror, it's a joke, you know. And until we discover what really happened on 9-11, and who was responsible for 9-11? Because that's where the war on terror emanates from. That's where it comes from. It was 9-11 that allowed this war on terror to begin. And until we get to the bottom root of 9-11, the truth of 9-11, we'll never know about the war on terror. I think the biggest lesson from our experience in Iraq is that war is never the answer. War is not the answer. War is not an acceptable energy policy. Illegal and immoral war is not worthy of the people of our country, not reflective of their values, and should never be our policy. The firefighters on 9-11 were carrying precisely the same radio that had malfunctioned during the response to the 93 bombing at precisely the same location. And this is something that they knew from 1993, that you know, in the Trade Center and in, in buildings that size, the radios just were not adequate. I lost my son Jimmy on 9-11. From what I heard from people that survived that day, they saw him up around the 30th floor and uh, he uh, Never made it out. He never heard the call to get out. I blame this totally on Rudy Giuliani. He knew they had a problem with those radios. Why didn't he do something about when, it? When um, I think it was 1791, uh, George Washington warned in his farewell address, he warned the American people to beware the false patriots who will wrap themselves in the flag but betray your values. I think we've definitely got um, that personified in this yeah. administration. But the 911 truthers now are able to see through all of that and um, their sole motivation is just to find out what happened that day. How did U.S., a multi-trillion dollar military and intelligence infrastructure fail four times on one day? That's all. Just tell us how I think that it's happened. important to say this administration clearly has made the United States less safe. And as citizens of this country, we can't be afraid to say that. They have made us less safe. Period. Dot, Mr. Meek, less safe. I'm, I'm from the old school. Certain people walk on water. The President of the United States is one of them. If I can't trust the President of the United States, I don't know. It's a terrible thing when American citizens can't trust their president. You begin to wonder what the hell is with the whole system? There's something wrong with the entire system. The government exploited my feelings of patriotism, of 
of uh, a deep desire for uh, revenge for what happened to my son. But I was so insane with wanting to get even, I was willing to believe anything. George W. smirks, Dick Cheney smears, Rumsfeld jokes, Powell blusters, Rice lies, Enron and WorldCom steal, DynCorp vaccinates, Halliburton feeds and feeds and feeds and feeds. Americans hurt, and in Iraq, Americans die. Our national leaders insult our allies, create more foes, reward their friends, increase our insecurity through their own policies, and plunge the American people into the deepest economic abyss of a generation. I thank the gentleman. I rise in opposition of this bill, but I would like to clarify something. We're not trying to scare kids. This president's foreign policy is what's scaring the kids of this country. And that people have said today, why are people believing this? Why are people believing this big internet hoax? Well, it's the same people that told us Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Same people that told us Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Same people that told us we are going to be able to use the oil for reconstruction money. Same people that told us that we'd be greeted as liberators, not occupiers. Same people, same president that told us the Taliban is gone. Same president that told us that Poland is our ally two days before they pull out. Same president that tells us Iraq is going just great. Same president that tells us the economy is going just great. Same people that told us the tax cut was going to create millions of jobs. Same people that told us that the Medicare program only cost $400 billion when it really cost $540 billion. So please forgive us for not believing what you're saying. Please forgive the students of this country for not believing what you're saying. Not one thing. Not one thing about this war that has been told to the American people or that has been told to these college students has been true. Not one thing. Bremer says we need more troops. The Pentagon says we need more troops. And this president can't get them from the international community. There's only one option left. Let's be honest with the American people. I yield back the balance. And I take no pride in, in saying that, this, that, that it's, we're less safe now. Because our constitutional obligation, when we swear and put our hands up, is to make sure we protect this country. I take no pride in this. But what we have to do is take this information and Massive fix it. Massive failures all around us enter into the calculation. And any answer to my question, who are we and who's responsible for what we've become? From the lies to our service men and women and to all of us about Iraq, to the still unanswered questions about September 11th, the Congress has failed in its oversight of the executive branch, and the American people have failed in their oversight of the integrity of our political system. Question I'd ask if I dare of the ones whom we never see. Guns and daughters are voices for you, but who speaks for me? Thank you.